A very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the 71st edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. It is time to look at the extremes that have been taking place around the planet in the last seven or so days. First and foremost, uh, be sure to like, share and subscribe with your friends and family if you haven't already done so. I uh, do greatly appreciate everybody's support, uh, the comments in the sections below the videos and um, yeah, the channel continues to grow and I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel if you are a weather uh, and uh, a weather and climate fanatic and uh, you're interested in learning more about the bigger, broader picture and seeing what is taking place. So we're going to get right into the Man Julian Oscillation. I quite often refer to this because I do believe that this is quite a key driver especially when it's in a, a fairly active or amplified state. I do believe firmly that this is quite a driver in terms of the global weather pattern, actually. And we've seen a phase four and five. We're currently in that. We're seeing a strengthening of jet stream winds over the Pacific. That's in turn having an impact on North America, but also it's having an impact here in Western Europe as well. When you have that MGO, that active phase, strong convection over the maritime continent, so Indonesia, even parts of Australia, uh, up into Malaysia, Thailand, we're seeing increased uh, thunderstorm activity. That tends to have an impact um, further north. It releases a lot of heat, and what that does is it extends the jet out of Siberia, so we've got a strengthening of the jet stream. We'll have more psychogenesis over the North Pacific. We've been seeing that taking place at quite stormy conditions anywhere from Alaska right the way into the northwest portion of, of the United States. We're seeing um, stormy conditions, deep areas of low pressure developing over the North Pacific. And that's all thanks to that active phase of the MJO through the maritime continent. And then that has a downstream impact on the pattern even across the North Atlantic and into the West of Europe. So we've, we've warmed things up. We had a, a very cold start to the month of December. Now we've turned things around. Uh, I believe the, the, the initial um, high latitude blocking that we've seen, the deep negative AO, the deep negative NAO, was a product of that strengthening of the MGO in phases eight and one. Now it's progressing through phases four and five, which is the warm phase. And you can see here that we're now seeing it uh, over the western portion of the Pacific. So we're starting to see that enhanced convection now leaving uh, the maritime continent and entering the central portion of the Pacific. Now, in turn, that will have a new influence on the upper air pattern. So you notice here, by the time we reach Tuesday, the 12th of December, you've now fo focused that enhanced convection now over the central portion of the Pacific. Now, as I've made mention of in recent days, if we had a strong to super El Nino, which we I know we don't have, we've got a strong El Nino. It looks as if the El Nino region 1.2 is uh, rapidly starting to uh, weaken. I was going to say fade, but not quite. We're seeing it rapidly weaken. Now, if we had a stronger and warmer East Pacific versus West Pacific, we would have the MJO further east. So the enhanced convection would be more likely to be over the central and eastern portion of the Pacific. Now, I've still alluded to the fact, I made mention on, on Friday's video about the, the fear of the warm option it is still on the table because we don't know the delayed reaction to the, the, the warming the strong westerly wind burst that we've seen taking place around the dateline influences that sometimes take a while to have a reaction to the atmosphere. And even though we're see still seeing this rapid cooling taking place now over the far east of the Pacific, we still need to watch for this possible delayed reaction between ocean and atmosphere. What we don't want to see is the MJO and the enhanced convection being further east over the Pacific, that tends to fire up a stronger jet further north, and then in turn, that sends a lot of mild ocean air into Western Europe here. So those big El Nino years, 97 and also 2015, and I, and I know I've been slightly criticized for making reference to December 2015, 
but I'm I'm putting everything on the table here. I'm I'm showing you everything as opposed to just giving you a biased opinion of what I want to see. I want to I want to see a cold winter like many people. Obviously, we we'll have to take into consideration things like heating bills. The bills are going up in January. That puts a tremendous strain on individuals trying to heat their homes, trying to feed their family. So in some respects, you don't necessarily want to see a cold winter in, in this day and age. But the, the like I said, I'm trying to show you everything. I know we're not in a super El Nino, but we do have a strong El Nino. It's a, a weird El Nino this year. It's not a typical one. I know every single individual El Nino is different. But it, the atmosphere is responding quite differently. If we get this Central Pacific convection, this MJO phase 8 and 1, it's more likely to have, especially with a West Cube or an East QBO, not West, an East QBO and other aspects, global sea surface temperatures, the solar cycle, etc. etc. So yeah, I'm probably starting to ramble on and going off in that tangent. I didn't expect to do that in today's video, but I'm trying to show you all the picture uh you can see here that uh, we've got the jet stream this is the 250 millibar winds and we've got that jet ext extension so a stronger jet uh, over the pacific then tends to lead to storminess with deepening the trough over the north pacific but as that mjo rotates and propagates eastwards then that has a different impact on the north pacific pattern but what we want to see is that deepening the Aleutian low then the pumping of the high over the western portions of North America, then that sends the cold east. We also want to see the, the, the build-up of pressure over the North Atlantic and shutting down this jet here. But this is a very phase four and five of the MJO, both over the Pacific and over the Atlantic at the moment. But it is expected to go um, into phases six and phases seven, which uh, promotes more blocking once again. So you play through this loop, you can see the jet one after another but notice here the build up of pressure over the north atlantic that's a slight change taking place and we have got another area of low pressure moving in uh, so yeah lots of things going on at the moment here um this is the current pressure over the continent and we've got a, a difference between 979 millibars just off ireland versus a 1054 millibar high over russia and uh, some very cold air underneath that area of high pressure as you can see mild 13 celsius parts of the uk and ireland at the moment we've got 44 minus 44 at the kazim or kazim river in russia i believe that's european russia if that's the case that's the coldest temperature of the year so far i made mention of that in yesterday's video so very mild conditions across the west of europe versus a very cold Eastern Europe here, notice even Germany starting to recover from that cold spell that they had uh, along with ourselves to start the month of December. Very, very cold start of the month, extending anywhere from the UK, Northern Europe, all the way across much of Russia, as you can see here. But uh, while we had uh, some exceptionally cold temperatures to start the month, we're now seeing record warmth. Eastern China, the Koreas, Japan, etc. Look at what is going on over the far north of uh, North America and Greenland, exceptionally warm conditions, but this is that negative AO, NAO pattern, and uh, you can see the reflection in that. Looking at Europe specifically, and you can see here that we have uh, still some very cold anomalies here. Despite the mild conditions now, it's gonna be interesting to see, do we turn this month around, or do we have a colder than average December? If, if we do have, that would be the second December in a row that we've had below average here, which would be rather interesting, actually. Looking back at the global picture, and let's see what's going on with the rest of the planet here. So we've got warm conditions. The Middle East, as you can see here, uh, much, of a, much of the mid to low latitudes of Asia is running very warm compared to average north. And South Africa is warmer than average, cooler across the equator. You can see here a very warm Australia, warm Indonesia, Southeast Asia, very warm compared to normal. Brazil has a largely above average versus a cold Argentina, as you can see here, parts of Peru, Bolivia, I think that would be. We've got below average conditions here. So let's have a look and see um, what the models are indicating. By the time we reach Tuesday, we've got an area of low pressure, another one, another system coming into the UK and Ireland. We're laying down those rains once again. 
But look at the what we've got further east. We've got a 1064 millibar area of high pressure. They put that in the context. The highest pressure ever recorded in the UK is 1053.6 HPA or millibars. That was recorded at Aberdeen 1902. So pretty impressive area of high pressure over Russia at the moment. But it's still a way off the global record for mean sea level pressure. 1084.8 millibars that was recorded in over Mongolia back in the 19th of December 2001 here and uh, yeah we've got some very cold conditions across the far east of Russia but these areas of low pressure continue to drive Atlantic air into the western side of Europe. Now looking at the uh, precipitation upcoming seven days we've got wetter than average we've still got a uh, drier than average across the northwest of Scotland as you can see here but in uh, Northern Ireland eastern part of the Republic of Ireland, much of uh, eastern Scotland, the rest of the UK wet than average, very wet compared to average across um, northern uh, portions of uh, France, much of France actually, the low countries, Germany, the Alpine region continues to see wet conditions. But watch what happens, we dry things out significantly as we move through the remainder of December. Now let's have a look and see what the temperatures are showing here because this is a rather interesting with regards to the run up to Christmas. So let's go back to the day one through five. You can see here, slightly cooler than average Western Scotland. The rest is warmer than average, very warm compared to average across Spain, France, low countries, Germany, still holding on to the cold across uh, Scandinavia and Western Russia. But watch this space as we move towards the period of Christmas, the GFS ensemble has it cooling down, nothing dramatic, but cooling down nonetheless, that would get uh, rather interesting. And is that a response to the MJO shift? Let's have a look and see what the, the 500 millibar uh, pattern is showing. This is the anomaly here. And you can see the area of high pressure kind of shifts west. So we go from a trough, as you can see here, we go from a trough at the moment. Then we see the area of high pressure build over the UK and Ireland. That's also a response to the five four, five in the six of the MJO. Then you notice the, the high retreats to the west, and that would be in the Christmas period. So we need to watch out for more of a northerly influence, colder conditions, and possibility of snow in the Christmas to New Year period. We'll look at that in a bit more detail in the coming week ahead. So stay tuned for that. Another reason why uh, you should subscribe to the channel here. Then let's have a look and see what we're looking at with regards to what's been taking place around the planet at the moment here. So let's go on to Twitter. Be sure to check out my Twitter page if you're on Twitter and want to know what, uh, frequent updates, you can do that. So let's have a look and see what's going on at the moment here. Massive eruption here, West Sumatra in Indonesia. This was a, a huge pyroclastic flow, as you can see here. Let me know in the comment section below, is it possible that this has an influence on the longer term climate i would be curious to know what your thoughts are on that i do know that there is some people that are rather clever compared to myself and uh, know a little bit more about what they're talking about with regards to that be curious to know what your thoughts are but massive flooding due to a cyclone hitting the china chennai area of india you can see here this is that four four and five of the mjo uh, flash flooding across parts of java and indonesia also major hail uh, across parts of Peru. We've got more, there's that flooding. Uh, this is in Paraguay, South America here, Saudi Arabia. There's another volcanic eruption here. This time it's in uh, in Japan. Uh, record warm conditions in Ontario. We've seen big swings between warm and cold over uh, North America in recent times, Eastern China, parts of uh, Hong Kong, North Korea, Taiwan, South Korea, record breaking warm. Big contrast over uh, Australia as well, as you can see. Uh, major heat, 27.8 Celsius in northern portions of China for December. Ridiculous warmth, record warm conditions, 20, the warmest in 25 years for uh, Winnipeg, as you can see here. I'm quickly, rapidly running through this, folks. Sorry to skip through so quickly with uh, regards to this here. Uh, minus 58.7 at Lima in Siberia. That was the coldest temperature anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere so far. Big storm, uh, again, due to that jet extension into western portions of uh, uh, Canada. And then we've had minus 18 at, uh, at uh, Munich in recent days as well. 
So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.